As Anna said, I want to give the perspective of the American Chamber of Commerce in Ireland, which, as Anna has said, is the voice of the 700 companies, uh, Irish operations of US companies, that employ directly 130,000 people, indirectly 100,000 people, and account for 26% of our GDP in, in Ireland. And of course, as you know, they're across all the key sectors, data born on the internet, ICT, uh, pharma, medtech, financial services, and general services, including um, financial and professional services. And these jobs are jobs of substance and jobs of innovation. And you are well aware, I'm sure, in the audience of the amazing breakthrough innovations happening uh, in Ireland, on the island of Ireland, thanks to US foreign direct investment across all the sectors I have mentioned. And these innovations are enhancing and saving people's lives around the world. Uh, some things about Ireland's corporation tax policy bear repeating, and I do apologize to those of you who have heard these things before, but they do bear repeating because they get forgotten, and they get forgotten in our country as much as internationally. And most recently I heard a debate on our national radio station last weekend where these points seem to have been forgotten by some of the participants in the debate. Our corporation tax policy was not a recent invention and was not imposed upon us by evil corporates. It was our own idea, and it was our own idea hatched by visionaries in the late 1950s. And thank goodness they did it because they were facing a country that had little uh, industry to speak of, that was on the edge of Europe, and apart from our innate creativity and brains as a people, our only natural resource was grass. So if we're going to live to the uh, expectations of the rest of the world, and if we're going to have a future for next generations, we had to attract inward investment here. And indeed, it was visionaries like T.K. Whitaker, who was recently honored at a, a tremendous event in Dublin uh, in his 97th year, and Sean Lamas, that set the framework for that corporate tax policy that has led to 60 years of foreign direct investment. And the Taoiseach recently, in launching a book about uh, TK, said it very well. He said, the policy steered Ireland from a stunting and suffocating protectionism to embrace instead the idea of free international trade. Now imagine if TK and Sean Lamas and others sat around the table and had their crystal ball and said, let's hope that this policy attracts the top 10 if they knew about it, data born on the internet companies to create jobs here. The top 10 ICT companies, nine of the top 10 of the world's leading pharmaceutical companies, and seven of the world's top 10 medtech companies creating jobs here. They'd probably say, well, that's an outlandish expectation, but let's go for it. Well, that's what has been achieved. That's what we have achieved. And you'd imagine, for that reason, we would want to make sure we protected within reason the ingredients that achieves that success. So in light of our history and that 60 decades, this, as far as Ireland is concerned, is not a recent idea and we are not involved, far from it, in a race to the bottom. And Ireland has always focused on not just the rate, but our regime and our reputation. And I think it's interesting for Pascal to speak this morning and emphasize regulation. And I really, and the Chamber really welcomes the contribution uh, by the Department of Finance to uh, research materials in relation to this, this global discussion. And I particularly highlight the excellent research work done by Seamus Coffey of UCC with Kate Le Levy from the Department on Ireland's effective corporate tax rate, which I think has dispelled a lot of the misconception and noise. And as you know, our effective corporate tax rate is extremely close to our headline rate of 12.5%. Members of the Chamber deeply appreciate the fact we have a rules-based and transparent legislative system, that we have a robust revenue authority that meets best international practice, that we have such an extensive tax treaty and information exchange agreement, and that we are ensuring that all our tax code, and including measures like the Knowledge Development Box, will be aligned with OECD and EU best practice, and of course that we do not have any hidden tax deals in the Irish system. It's also worth remembering that Ireland's corporate tax take as a percentage of GDP is on a par with the rest of the major member states of the European Union, and that 70% of our corporate tax take comes from the foreign direct investment sector. Now, the Chamber 
deeply appreciates the consultative approach taken to the BEPS process, not just by the OECD, but by our own Department of Finance. And I want to take this opportunity uh, on behalf of the Chamber to pay tribute to the excellent work done by officials from Revenue and the Department, fully embedded and involved in the uh, BEPS process and discussions. So you'll see our uh, detailed position paper on BEPS on our website, amcham.ie. It represents the direct involvement of 100 uh, US companies operating here, as well as the input of the Silicon Valley tax leadership group. So it's very representative. And you'll see our focus is not just on Ireland, but on Europe, because Ireland, of course, is a gateway to Europe. And the chamber uh, welcomed the budget 2015 uh, move in relation to corporation tax policy. We liked the mixture of certainty and ambition. We certainly cheered loudly the Minister's statement that our 12.5% rate is settled policy, not up for discussion, not on the table, because quite frankly, our member companies would welcome less of a, an obsession with our 12.5% corporate tax rate, because we do think it is settled policy and it ain't the only show in town. But we also reckon, reckon, um, uh, welcome the ambition uh, that the Minister set out on behalf of the government, that Ireland will continue to attract the best companies in the world, and like our friends in the United Kingdom, we have set out a very ambitious corporate tax roadmap, which includes elements such as the knowledge development box. Now, why this consultative process is so very welcomed by the Chamber is because we believe, and it's, it's worth stating again, corporates and the corporate sector is essential if the BEPS process and vision is actually to be implemented and realized. And I think that's important in the context of some of the noise in the media debate and reference has been made to um, um, hearings, uh, committee hearings, indeed on both sides of the Atlantic. And I think it is unhelpful uh, to demonize corporates if we want to get the right answer to this problem. And in fact, in fairness to Pascal Santaman and indeed to um, Angel Guria, the OECD Secretary General, he's always been very clear that the issue we're dealing with is not behavior by corporate taxpayers. The problem we're dealing with, quite frankly, is a failure of policymakers to keep pace with the developments of how businesses do business globally, and that's what the mismatch is all about. And you will all have seen that sort of face-off between parliamentarians and the corporate sector, where essentially the corporate sector is saying, you set the rules, we want to comply by them, but your rules are now out of date and need to be updated. So because, as you know, we are in, in an extremely competitive global battle for jobs and the European Union are competing with other super regions around the world, and we must remember that, it's a European Union collective battle for these jobs, certainty is absolutely essential. And reference has been made to the state aid investigation process going on. We believe it is absolutely essential that we have a robust and effective state aid investigative process, but that it does rise above political tensions. And also we believe it's important that the manner of that investiga those investigations should not seek to undermine the important and necessary interactions between corporates and, and revenue authorities. Reference has been made to the CCCTB uh, back on the table again. It's been on the table as long as I've been on the table, if you'll forgive that uh, uh, segue. But also it's very interesting, and I, I won't do it any better than the Financial Times does today in its analysis of why it is back on, on the table. So certainty, really, really important. Now, in terms of the Chamber's view on the digital economy and the data sector, you know, uh, we have a tremendous opportunity and prize to be seized in Ireland because we have real substance from all the major global players uh, in the digital economy here. And we have some really exciting startups in, in that sector also uh, making their mark here as well. So we think there's a huge opportunity for Ireland to be a global center of excellence in data collection, protection, analysis, storage, and commercialization. But I really mean it when I say a good corporate tax policy is not the only ingredient that we need to make that happen. 
We need, a, we need a really strong talent policy. We need a really strong data regulatory framework. We welcome the appointment of Helen Dixon as Data Protection Commissioner. That office needs the resources and positioning appropriate to that uh, authority. We need a progressive uh, and uh, competitive uh, person tax regime. We need connectivity. And we need to make sure we continue and we really welcome the announcement about the Boland's uh, Mills development. We really need to ensure we have continued to have a good supply of good office and residential accommodation uh, in our city. So to conclude, Anna, uh, and to conclude on the theme of certainty, um, in that context, and the, the phrase raised to the bottom is bandied about, it's really important that all these processes we're talking about isn't a raise to the bottom because we have a lot of great strengths in Ireland that shouldn't be diminished uh, by these processes, including the fact we have certainty, we have a robust revenue authority, and we have a very uh, uh, appropriate um, uh, tax administration compliance uh, burden, uh, very appropriate, uh, very competitive, that can't be diminished. And finally, um, and we've talked today a bit about the, the process and the fact that this uh, process originated, if you will, with people power. Uh, during the recession, people seeing consumption taxes and personal taxes rising and seeing the various um, um, uh, stories about our corporates paying their fair share. There's expectation now from citizen, citizen, citizenry around the world about the outcome of this process, but also there's expectation from the corporate sector that whatever solution is arrived at is in fact um, deliverable. Now this is really important because it goes to the faith that we have in the institutions leading this process and that's not just important for BEPS, it's also important because many of those same institutions are also seeking to deliver what should be a landmark EU-US trade deal or the Transatlantic Trade Investment Partnership, TTIP. So faith in those institutions, really important for those reasons as well. Thank you all very much.